We have again approached a season where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Even though this throughout history, this time throughout history, has been a time when the pagans worshipped their gods, the, ch the early church thought it necessary to bring this holiday into conjunction with the pagan holiday of the pagan world of that day to try to reach the pagan. And this is why we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ at this time. And I will teach a little more on this subject later on. But today I want to show you why Jesus came. For those of you who wonder why we celebrate Christmas. Sure, everybody has heard of the little baby Jesus. But why did Jesus come into this world? The Bible teaches he came not into this world to, con to condemn the world, but to save the world. And today I want to speak on this subject. But before I get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh God, that you will open the hearts and the minds of those who are listening today. Lord, there may be some who are lonely at this season. No family, no friends. I want to reach out to them today, Lord. You will open their hearts that they will know and see that you love them. For, Father, you remember the sparrow that falls to the ground. And you also remember everyone that has been born on this planet. I pray for those who are sick, for those who are lonely, Lord, that you will bless them this Christmas season with the joy of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, O precious God, for your grace. I ask you to bless this message. Bless the listeners, O God. In Jesus' name, Amen. When one studies John chapter 3, we come to the very familiar verse found in verse 16. It tells us, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the good news verse of the Bible. For the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. He was born into this world to give life, to give the gift of eternal life. Yes, that is the gift that God gave through His Son Jesus. The gift of eternal life to everyone that is born on this planet. A lot of people think that eternal life comes through good works, some traditional uh, laws that they keep, but that is not Christianity. Christianity is becoming a Christ one through believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is so easy that every person on the planet can do it. There will be no excuse for anyone who misses heaven. They will not be able to blame anyone but themselves because God made it very easy. He sent His only begotten Son to take the blame for you and me. The Lord Jesus Christ stilled the anger of God. He took care of the sin problem by becoming the sacrifice that the Lord God demanded. For you see, sin had to be paid for. And Jesus Christ paid for every last sin that was ever committed on this planet and will ever be committed. So I'm asking you today, are you a sinner? Yes, you are. For the Bible declares 
that we are all born sinners. We are all constantly evil and desperately wicked. So there is none better than anyone else. This should be music to the ear of the person who is throttled down by sin, who feels there is no hope for him. Jesus is your hope. You can turn to him and ask him for forgiveness. The Bible teaches those that turn to me, I will in no wise cast out. But we have to remember Jesus is the only way to God. There is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved except for the name Jesus. That is the only name that is available to us on how to get saved. I don't care how good your religion is. It will come short. It will fail you. You have to turn to Jesus. In verse 17 of John chapter 3, it tells us, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. A lot of people think when a preacher talks about the lake of fire and hell, that we have a condemning spirit. Oh, I've heard people say to me, don't tell me I'm going to hell. It's not me that came up with the plan. I'm just the delivery boy. And here, if that has been told you before, here is your chance to redeem yourself. If you are afraid of the lake of fire, if you are afraid of going to hell, and surely every person on this planet will go to the lake of fire, except they turn to Jesus. Under that one condition, they will escape the lake of fire if they turn to Jesus for salvation. We the people of this earth, we categorize sin. We think that homosexuality is a worse sin than drunkenness or incest or whatever pet sin that we have. Sin is sin. There is no such a thi thing as a good sin or a bad sin or a little sin or a big sin. If we even in our minds have an evil thought, that is like murdering a person. We then are condemned to the lake of fire. But Jesus came into this world to save us and not to condemn us. So if you have been condemned by a preacher telling you that you are going to end up in hell, then start listening to what the Word of God says. He has made an escape for you. For the preacher is just a messenger boy who tries to steer you away from the lake of fire. If you are all of a sudden anxious when somebody preaches a message on hell and the soon coming of Christ, and we know for a fact that not too many preachers preach on this subject anymore because they are afraid of offending you, then pay attention to what the Word of God says. It tells us, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Yes, dear friends, that's the antidote for your sin. If you are afraid of hellfire and brimstone preaching, there is only one reason for that. Because you have not made your peace with God. When I listen to some preacher preaching a message on, on the things that I do wrong, I am never guilty, but I am convicted 
because my guilt has been taken care of. I will never have to suffer the consequences of my wrongdoing through losing my salvation. But I am convicted sometimes, and I do something about it. But for those of you who have never made their peace with God, and you are guilty, and you are afraid when you hear a message being preached on the soon coming of Christ, or on the lake of fire, on, or on you dying, then it is time to turn to Jesus for your salvation. For Jesus did not condemn you, but he came to save you. But here is the reason why so many people feel condemned, why so many turn away from God. It tells us, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They do not want to turn to Jesus because they still enjoy the sin that they are living in. Sure, today many proclaim the name of Christ even though they live in sin. But the Bible teaches by their fruits you shall know them. It tells us for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. That is the problem with many people when you start telling them about salvation. The name of Jesus instantly starts to convict and they know if they turn to Jesus they have to make a change. They do not realize that Jesus will change them. They figure in their heart if we have to change then we don't want this Jesus. That's why so many will miss the way of salvation because they love sin more than they love righteousness. It tells us very clearly here in verse 21, But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. If you love the truth, if you in your heart truly want to change, you will come to Jesus because you will not care what people think of you. You do not care if you're going to be exposed or not. Yes, this is what the Bible teaches very clearly. There is one more verse which I want to read to you before I close out this message, and that is in John chapter 3, verse 36. It tells us, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. That simply means that the wrath of God is upon every person when he becomes born into this world. The moment you turn to Jesus, the wrath of God is lifted. If you do not turn to Jesus, then the wrath of God will stay on you. So don't make any excuses. Look at yourself. Be honest with yourself. I don't care what religion you're in. If you do not solely depend on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, you are lost and on your way to hell. Remember, Jesus came into this world not to condemn you, but to save you. So what I am saying is this, if you will be condemned, you will condemn yourself. For Jesus came into this world not to condemn you, but to save you. For we were condemned 
We were lost without hope. This is why Jesus came, to redeem us from the condemnation that God pronounced upon us. For the Lord Jesus Christ became sin for us. For the Bible teaches, He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Yes, dear friends, this is the good news of the Christian, of the Christmas message. Jesus came to give us the gift of eternal life by removing the condemnation that is upon us. The Lord will open your eyes to this awesome truth and make you a blessing. Amen. As of late, the time and the season that the early church has chosen to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ has come under considerable attack, not only from the secular world, but also from certain church organizations. The secular world has come to the conclusion that if a child sings Christmas carols, during the time of Christmas, he will offend people of different religions. So they are trying to take the name Christmas out of this holiday, and they are calling it the year-end break. They are trying to forbid children to sing Christmas carols, and they are trying to pass laws that you will not have Christmas symbols out in public places. This is what they are trying to do to destroy these holidays and they are gathering fast momentum. We can see that there is a great up upheaval, especially in the United States. When it comes to the things of God, people seem to be adamant to try to remove God from any public place there is. But God laughs in heaven. He knows that we are a vapor and he only has to blow a little bit and everybody would be gone. But when it comes to Christians starting to argue that we shouldn't celebrate this day because it's a pagan holiday, then we have to start wondering what really does it matter when we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, originally that was a pagan holiday. For you see, the pagans before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, after the harvest was in, after the work of the year was over, they would gather together in the month of December, and not only the month of December, but also January and maybe February, in the time when they didn't work very hard. They would gather together to banqueting and to celebrating their gods, the god of fertility, the god of prosperity, whatever god they were serving. And they would celebrate during those months and they would start in the month of December. And the early church uh, thought, we should bring the celebrating of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ into this time so that over time we can change and influence people into believing that it's because of Jesus that we celebrate this time. And it sure worked. Because today, oh, in most of the world, is where this is the time where they celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thus, people start to ask in question, who is this Christ and why do we celebrate? It happened exactly as the early church thought it would happen. It brought the focus on Jesus. But today so many Christians are starting to become self-righteous. We should not worship on, uh, we should not celebrate uh, the birth of our Jesus on this day because it's a pagan holiday. To God it does not matter. I want to ask you a question. 
If you build a big football stadium where people get together to worship the god of football, do you not have a crusade in that stadium then because they use it to worship the pagan god football? That is so foolish when you start to think of though of what Christians are nitpicking over. So I'm asking you this year, forget about your differences, rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ, give presents to your children, read them the Christmas story, have a good Christmas message on the 25th, and rejoice with those who are around you in our Lord Jesus Christ. And you will find that you have become a blessing to many. Of course, if you get caught up in the things of the world, in the, in the commercializing of Christmas, of course that's wrong. But that is beside the point. Rejoice in the day that the early church has chosen to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and you will find rest in your heart and in your soul. The Lord will bless you and make you a blessing if you will just relax and rejoice in your God. Amen.